pain, that medically elusive evil. What about changing the focus from controlling pain to understanding pain as more than a symptom? Can pain be cheated? My name is Dr. Dean, chiropractor and physiotherapist. My goal is to reframe how medicine understands pain to improve care. This podcast series is dedicated to a same-day conservative treatment for low back pain. This podcast has a companion published article number five. Welcome to the Pain is Not the Only Problem podcast. The essentiality of conservative care is being reevaluated. The contributors to patient symptoms are being re-explored. All options are on the table. Article five, pain is not the only problem, neural and motor contributors. These articles intend to, one, reevaluate the prevailing clinical practices thought to manage low back pain, two, submit and debate novel low back pain contributors and mechanisms, three, meet patient expectations and satisfaction and clinically meaningful results, four, recommend a conservative non-surgical course of care to override pain instantly, and five, restore ADLs and patient confidence on the first visit at low cost. Traumatic low back pain aside, there are six possible categories to organize low back pain. Classical orthopedic exams would likely not rule these out. The first two of the six are neural and motor contributors. While it might seem overly obvious that nerve malfunction or injury would contribute to low back pain, I propose that other neural contributors likely prevail. Subthreshold microtraumas represent accumulated tissue damages associated with a specific action that do not stimulate a symptomatic response. So these are subclinical. However, it does stimulate a tissue repair response that is repeatedly unsuccessful. Subthreshold microtrauma may occur due to intrinsic or acquired mechanical economy, also known as the path of least resistance or POLAR, P-O-L-R, or due to poor instruction, let's say in in athletics, or lack of instruction, occupational or sports demands, or other biases and habits. Failure to address subthreshold microtrauma while focusing on clinical symptoms such as pain does not deal with the causative faulty motor pattern. These underlying motor patterns are certainly dysfunctional if practiced over and over in ADLs and worse with sports, especially competitive sports when efforts, forces, and demands are highest, and while recovery time and recovery programs are neglected or not considered important. Many athletes are under-recovered, not over-trained. Poorly performing motor patterns are developed for a variety of reasons. However, regardless of the reason, an improved motor pattern that fires around or instead of the problem motor pattern will not use the faulty motor pattern nor the symptomatic tissue within it. Ha! So is it as simple as prescribing an improved fixed or resequenced motor pattern the same day? and your patient is back in action and in total awe, the microtraumas developed in a motor pattern or in a movement sequence in which the employment of that movement sequence does not match the mechanical capabilities intrinsic to it may be part of the problem. An example, the lumbar spine is not designed for rotation but rather for stability and transmitting rotational power across it when the origin of the rotation is at the TLJ or the thoracolumbar junction. If rotational power is fed towards the lumbar spine, it will be unable to deal with it as well as the TLJ. Lumbar spine microtraumas 
will cause inflammation, eventual scarring, and degenerative changes. Continued feeding of rotation to the lumbar spine will eventually emerge as clinical pain. The patient must learn to employ the TL junction rotation and abandon lumbar spine rotation simultaneously. Remember, symptomatic compensation to associated dysfunction, SCAD, S-C-A-D. According to Vlemming 2012, poorly performing motor patterns commonly do not originate in distal motor patterns. They are continuous with myofascial slings that cross the midline and between the upper and lower body simultaneously. Ground force reaction, also known as GFR, is the body's proprioceptive baseline. Therefore, all motor malfunction, faulty motor patterns, occur because core neutral is not established and the distal motor pattern is not grounded into the core first. The sequence is broken. Quality ground force reaction must be established first and prior to sequencing distal motor patterns. For example, a tennis player's ready stance is corrupt. Narrow footing, legs are straight, the racket is down, waiting at the baseline. The player is unprepared to return the ball. When the ball arrives within stroke proximity, but since the core neutral is not automatically established, the player must react with an enormous amount of sudden torque, we could say, of the lumbar spine, and hit the ball any way possible. So this, this is defensive playing. In tennis, this is called being late. Rather than being ready in a wide sprung, let's say loosely sprung, lowered core neutral stance, rack it up, and when the ball is approaching, the player sets up by running into the ball with a well-prepped swing setup. This is also called offensive play, and in tennis is called being early. Surgical scarring and traumatic scarring is disorganized, non-vascularized, what we call hard tissue networks that cause adjacent muscle to become involved in a motor pattern for which they were not designed or can eliminate motor patterns and joint function in the lower back. Since scarring is not innervated, it can't contribute to quality proprioceptive feedback absent of GOs and muscle spindles. I see a lot of surgical failure patients complaining of low back pain. If I had a chance to see them before a decision for surgery, these patients could have experienced a much better quality of life a long time ago. Remember to ask about scars during history taking. During diagnosing and prescribing, focus on motor patterns and the slings that they are embedded within, along with ground force reaction to understand the faulty motor pattern and the patient's symptoms. SCAD is likely the best place to start. Build the best possible relationship with your low back pain patients by exploring motor patterns because pain is not the only problem. Thank you for joining me today. Let's advocate for improved patient satisfaction and for the profession. Let's demonstrate a cross-cultural willingness to strengthen medicine. Thank you.